So this video uh, covers the basic configuration part, how we, uh, what are the required uh, steps to configure this. So we are actually using our uh, uh, personal virtual environment. Uh, you could use uh, that, or if you have a few firewalls spin up in velocity, you can use that for the configuration as well. Uh, so we, we do need multiple links, ISP links for SD-WAN. So in this case, what we are using is the Ethernet connection, uh, you know, simulating the ISP uh, network. Uh, just to give you guys a quick uh, uh, rundown on the configuration uh, or the topology, this is how it looks like. You can see there is there are two sites, standalone hub and a spoke or branch. Uh, there's one firewall on on this side which has which we are using two connection ISP1 and ISP2. Similarly, there is another uh, firewall on the other side using the same interfaces uh, configuration. Uh, they are in the same subnet, uh, so they, they, there is a communication between two two of them. So to make sure that you know we have uh, internet connectivity and routers in between, uh, we added a uh, another firewall. So basically, all these three firewalls have similar interfaces and part of the same network for any given interface. For example, Ethernet 1 slash 2 on one firewall is using 16.0.0 uh, slash 24. It is same across all these firewalls. That's how we are able to basically communicate and route the traffic. Right. So once you know we configure sd wan what it is going to do is it's going to create a ipsec tunnel so there would be one ISP, ipsec tunnel from using link uh, isp2 and then there would be another ipsec tunnel from isp2 to using uh, isp1 similarly uh, the other side isp1 would connect to isp2 one ipsec and isp2 would connect to ISP1. So there would be a four uh, total IPsec tunnels that would be using. And inside those IPsec tunnel, we are advertising network on this uh, hub side as 192.168.1.0. So this is being advertised uh, as a BGP prefix. So once the tunnel, these tunnels comes up, this is sent inside the in IPsec tunnel. Similarly, on the other side, we have 2.1. That goes also on the other side saying that, hey, if you have any uh, route for, uh, you know, any traffic coming to uh, 2.1 uh, or 2, basically, 192.168.2.0 slash 24, you can set it inside that tunnel. And these are actually the hosts that we have connected. There, there is a... Uh, another zone or interface connecting these two devices. So before we start the configuration, I do want to show you the uh, configuration of on the uh, PV environment. Uh, so this would help you to set up your own lab in the, uh, you know, in your PVE environment, if you have. Uh, let me search for my, oops, I'll be timed out. Okay, so all right, this is my first uh, device. This is PAVM, and you can see I have three or five different VLANs. Three zero. This is all mapped here, and similarly here I have the same number of VLANs mapped, and this is the actor which is acting as the internet. It has the same VLAN map here, and Windows client. I am using VLAN 33, which is for 192.168.1.1 uh, network. And then I have the Windows 12, which is using 3304. So this is just a basic, uh, how the VLAN, how the configuration is done in the PVE environment. Uh, now let's go to the panorama. So th for this to work, we need to uh, basically use panorama to push configuration uh, to these devices. I already had my uh, 
uh, firewalls using the template and device group. So I use the same one to basically make it or push the configuration of the SD-WAN. So first thing what we need to do is uh, we got to make sure that we have the plugin uh, for uh, on, on this panorama for SD-WAN. So if you search SD-WAN, you can install and download and install this. So this is the first requirement. And of course, you need to have license on the firewalls for the SD-WAN. Okay. So let's start with the configuration. So first thing what we need to do is create a tags these are critical in uh, you know configuring the firewall uh, sd wan configuration so you create them so these are shared objects so once you create here you would see it on the other uh, uh, template as well or other device group as well so this is for standalone hub i created three of them uh, and you can see it here as well uh, you can read, uh, you know, in the uh, admin guide or in the documentation why they are uh, required. But this is something we need to, you know, do as a first step. And the second step would be to create a traffic distribution profile. Uh, I believe this is also a shared uh, configuration. No, this is actually I created just, you know, on, on specific templates uh, or sorry, in the device group. So. Once you have the tags ready, you can map it here. And you, I selected best available path. You can choose whatever, you know, you can choose differently. It all depends on the traffic, how you want to, uh, what do you want to do with the traffic, right? One, uh, based on the application. Uh, so similarly, standalone hub, I have the same similar configuration, right? And now the next thing we have to do is, go under network and create the SD-WAN interface profile. Okay. So this is where you select what kind of link that you have. So in customer environment, it could be LTE, you know, or cable modem or ethernet, or it could be Wi-Fi connection. So this is where you select that and also map your tags uh, that this link is this Wi-Fi and this is link type. You can choose one of these, right? And uh, for for this configuration, I left everything else just configured the link type. Uh, that's pretty much for you know uh, for the configuration. Like you create three of them, and similarly you create the three on the other side, hub side, same fashion that you have created here, right? Okay. Now let's talk about interfaces, right? So. Again, this is standalone hub. Uh, so once you once you are using that link as ISP, all you need to do is for SD WAN is check this box which says uh, enable SD WAN. Once you do that, it gives you uh, option to select the next shop gateway. So this is my first device. Let's go back to the drawing. So 172.16.10 slash 24. Now, what I'm saying is next hop is this guy, 192.16.0.5, which is the, the middle firewall, which has the same interface, right? So this is dot five. And SD-WAN profile, here you would map your uh, connection, like what you want to use, broadband, Wi-Fi, right? So similarly, you do that for other interface as well. Uh, Ethernet 1 slash 4 that I'm using. So here it's 1110 and it is going to have its uh, default gateway set to 115. So we can verify here. So it's a gateway as 115, right? Now, same configuration on the spoke side. Uh, the other side that we have uh, one slash two two and it would have the same gateway so this side also it is you know start the interface IP address is 0 0.2 and 1.20 and their default gateway is again 0 0.5 and 1.5 that way there is the 
routing is taken care by the uh, the device in the middle so this is 16.0.5 which is here okay okay so this is the interface configuration now what we need to do is after this is done uh, we are pretty much done with the configuration of interfaces uh, you can go ahead and commit and push and make sure that uh, those changes are there and you would see your interfaces here showing this uh, you know sd wan connection or uh, icon right uh, next thing is we create uh, devices right now we are actually creating this sd wan technology so this is where we use the sd wan uh, plugin to push the configuration so once we create uh, so we have to create either hub or branch and map what site it is so let's take a look at this so this is corporate site and then you enable the bgp right so bgp this is my router id this is my loopback address this is as number and this is the route we are uh, advertising so this configuration would be pushed to the uh, firewall so once we you know uh, commit this change uh, this plugin would run the script on the firewall and make all these configurations and create all the tunnels using this information uh, and similarly here uh, let me I created for you know branch and then this is information and this is my BGP information w one thing I forgot to tell you guys is the policies you do have to create four different uh, uh, sorry like policies to allow this traffic you know basically going in and out for for both the sites so i created uh, as we went like allowed all those four and we also need to create these zones so we need four zones basically uh, for you know for this configuration internet in, internal zone to branch zone to hub right? and there just need to be a uh, layer three uh, zones uh, you, you don't need to configure anything else but then we just need to make sure that these zones have uh, security policies mapped because the script is going to use this information to create uh, ipsec tunnels right so once we configure the sd wan devices you can go under vpn cluster and here we first add the vpn address pool so here I've created 10600. So this is the pool or this is the pool that it is going to use to create all this configuration, the tunnel interfaces on you know both the sides. Uh, and then we create the cluster. So here cluster, you use hub and spoke. Mesh, mesh would be that, you know, there would be, uh, it's a full mesh basically. So in, in right here, you have, to ISP connection, IP sectional from uh, ISP2 to ISP connection from here. In the other side, then you would also have two on the here. Uh, it's on from the uh, spoke side as well. Uh, so that's basically the you know the full mesh. But this is hub and spoke configuration. Uh, so once this is done, you have to commit to Panorama first, and then you have to go. Uh, push this to device once this is pushed uh, it will create this configuration automatically on on the firewalls so you need to verify that all the configuration is uh, pushed correctly so see how it created all these uh, uh, tunnels 900 901 to four tunnels for four ipsec tunnels similarly here it has the same configuration uh, so this is basically the IPsec tunnel, but if you go here, this is configuration over here, and you can also verify the under the SD WAN that has these tunnels, uh, and also you can see the IPsec tunnel here. So there are IPsec tunnel from dot two to zero dot ten, dot two to one dot ten, one dot twenty to zero dot ten, twenty to one dot ten. Right, so this is basically uh, you know how you can validate that the configuration is good uh, 
Now, once we do that, now we need to verify whether the traffic is going inside the tunnel or not, right? So let's switch to CLI. Oh, first, before we go to CLI, here is the uh, one of the devices. So this is my one device, which is using 1.50. That's the IP address it's got. And it, uh, I believe it's from here. Uh, I have created that, you know, for, uh, profile. So this one is 1.50, yeah. So it this IP address is received from this uh, uh, firewall. See, it got, because I have created this site uh, with this interface and enabled the ACP on it. Similarly, the other windows, uh, it is 2.50, that is also from this. So, but this route, uh, this network now, is not uh, present on the uh, on the router, so it's not present in here. So we can take a look at here as well. So this I believe is my active device. So this traffic is actually go going inside the IP sector now, which is created uh, between these two sites. So while it's loading, okay, yeah, it's up here. So we can see there is network 1.5, 0 0.5, that's the, you know, the router for the next half for both of those sites. And there is no, there is no configuration of the other network, right? Uh, now let's do a ping here. Okay. I right, done the ping. So this is pinging the other side 150, right? So it's it's going to inside the you know tunnel. Similarly here, so this is 1.50, and I am pinging the other side. That also goes inside the tunnel. So it all looks good. The connectivity is there. So that's the first objective to make sure that we have connection and the connectivity between those two sides. Now let's. Take a look at the uh, CLI for, so there are a few CLI commands that we are learning as we go. Uh, like this one would show you the connection that we have. It shows us all the four tunnels that it has created. And you can, it's the IPsec tunnel, so we can run the uh, uh, IPsec command. Then it will show you, you know, these are the tunnel, it, they are up between those two devices. And let's take a look at the routing, show routing fib, right? So uh, all these tunnels, 901, 902, 903, they have IP addresses, right? Uh, so let's show, let's take a look at that. So 901 has 3.6, right? So this is the IP address that is coming from that VPN cluster. 901, 389, right? So these all have the IP addresses. And we also have this loopback IP address. So the BGP connection is actually on, on this loopback IP. It's not on the interfaces IP. And it is also going through the tunnel itself. So we can see here for 10.1.10, uh, uh, this is loopback. 900 next stop is interface. This is 901, right? And this is the other side. Okay. So our side is, yeah, 1.10. So 1.20 is the other side, which is you go into the SD WAN 902. That is the, that is your next stop. So it sends the traffic inside that tunnel. So, and we can see here, show routing protocol, BGP summary, right? It is connected with our peer on 1.20 and it's advertising 1 prefix. We can see BGP rib out. It's sending this 1.0 and next stop is this. It's sending to this peer. It is being advertised, right? And it is receiving from the other side. It is receiving other routes, but 
this is the route that is it is receiving from the other end of the uh, uh, site through the same uh, through the BGP connection so uh, this is pretty much it about the configuration